Zen Nation, Shema here. Welcome to our first episode of Ask Me Anything. You guys have questions and hopefully I have the answers you're seeking. Uh, I get hundreds of emails every month and it's almost impossible to answer them one-on-one. -on -one. So every other Thursday, we're gonna be shooting this new segment called Ask Me Anything, where I answer your questions. It's been a whirlwind of a week on the personal front. I was in Philadelphia for the Forbes 30 Under 30 conference. Fantastic conference, Forbes always does a great job. I got to see a lot of my colleagues there. Then I was in LA taking meetings with clients, so it feels really nice to be back in Dallas, touching home base, touching here, touching down in Texas for at least a couple of days before I had to take off again. So let's get to your questions. The first question comes from Kalina. Kalina is in the marketing field and sent me her question through LinkedIn. So Kalina actually heard me speak at Inbound 15 and she says, you were very inspiring and moving. I've been reading some of your content and wanted to reach out uh, with questions about my charity. So thank you so much, Kalina. It's always really heartening to hear as a speaker that the audience appreciated and hopefully was inspired by what you had to share. So to, I'm gonna paraphrase Kalina's question here uh, because she goes into a story that's really moving, but you know, there's a billion children who live in um, in extremely terrible conditions. And so Kalina is trying to do something amazing, which is dedicate her birthday to raising money for a, uh, a charity. And in her case, it's Charity Water, which is a great charity. They give 100% of their funding directly to the, the people in need and they provide clean water. So Kalina's main question is, um, how does one use social media and get people to actually pay it forward. Essentially, how do you get donations for something like this? She said, uh, some ideas have been to create videos, host events, have a garage sale. Uh, watching you speak fueled my inspiration and provided me with necessary gumption to believe that I can make a difference if I'm persistent and thoughtful. Absolutely, uh, Kalina, if you are persistent and thoughtful, I think those are the key ingredients to being successful regardless of your mechanism or your platform. Now. Here's what I will share. Very, very important when it comes to getting people to give to a nonprofit, it's really important that you do a good job telling the story and explaining how this makes a difference. I think so many times people think of charities and they think that, you know, hopefully the humanity's natural instinct will kick in and people will just give but you know there's a lot of factors that go into getting humans to make a difference and so while you can certainly use the tools out there you've got kickstarter indiegogo lots of places out there that will let you set up a place to collect pledges in fact even many nonprofits have their own landing pages so step one definitely set up a landing page a home base if you will to make sure that you have a great short URL that you can direct people to. So for example, you can say wishkalinahappybirthday.com, whatever it is, make sure that it's easy. You know, a big reason people don't give is because, not because they don't want to give, but because sometimes even those few extra steps can get really complicated. So make sure that people don't have to look for your charity, that it's really easy to find, that it's really shareable. And then when you're on the landing page, Make sure that you share your story, right? Clearly this charity speaks to you for a reason. So share that story and important, encourage other people to share as well. So once they've given, um, try to get them to send the message out to their friends and family. Um, and always nice also to keep them updated on what you're doing with the fundraising and how it's going. So I hope those tips help you. I think it's fantastic that you're trying to do this. Just remember you have to make it really easy for people. The easier you make it, the more likely they are to donate or to give. You know, a quick experiment, if you ever wanna do this, um, if you're ever by the subway or you're close to a trash can, put a Coke can or a crushed can by the trash can, and you will see that as people walk, if it's really close by, many people will pick it up and throw it away. If it's a good Samaritan and it's right there, that's an easy, hey, it's right there, I'm gonna pick it up, trash can, right? My good deed for the day, but, move that same can a couple of feet down and you'll find that even the best Samaritans have a hard time picking up that can and walking and trying to find the closest trash can. So what I'm really trying to tell you is make it so super simple and really easy for people to be able to support your cause. So good luck, Kalina. 
here's our next question. This actually stems from a good conversation I was having with one of my good friends and colleagues, Mina Chang. Mina Chang runs Linking the World. And when I say runs, I literally mean that she travels all over the world doing good. And uh, they were there right after uh, what happened in Haiti. She was right there on the ground in Nepal. In fact, I think she just came back from Afghanistan. And Mina and I were talking about the crisis in Syria. And Mina mentioned, you know, how it was really challenging to get people to pay attention to a big crisis until something really terrible and sometimes disturbing happens. So many of you may recall that a couple of weeks ago, a picture surfaced of a little four-year-old boy on the beach who had drowned trying to get away uh, with his family. And it was a heart-wrenching image. And it really got people asking questions about Syria. What is going on? How do we help these refugees? And the discussion between Mina and I really was, what can we do? What can we do so people recognize strategies like this before they happen? So people pay attention to the bigger causes before something terrible has to occur. So Mina asked me uh, from a marketing perspective, what can we do to shake people up and make them realize? And here's the biggest thing. Sometimes looking at people on a million scale or thousands of people doesn't have the same impact on us as that one individual or that one human or that one story. That's why I think Humans of New York, for example, is a great social media campaign because it highlights individual stories. Anytime you're trying to get attention for a bigger cause, and I guess this ties into Kalina's question as well, make sure that you tie it back to an individual. You know, they did a study a while uh, back and they looked at people who gave to nonprofits and asked ask them why did they not give to a particular nonprofit if they had a history of giving. And the answer may shock some of you guys. The reason that people didn't give to nonprofits, even if they historically had given, is because they didn't feel that their contribution would make a direct difference. And that's a terrible reason for someone not to give or for your nonprofit if you run one. Uh, to not be able to, to get donations. So really remember this, make it about an individual, tell the story of that person and showcase how their support really will make a difference. Kiva, by the way, does a fantastic job. Kiva.org is a micro lending site where you give directly to entrepreneurs in third world countries. I've been giving to Kiva for years, but it's so great because you're not giving to sort of a no-name institution, you're directly giving to a farmer in Uganda, for example, to buy cows, or you're supporting women in, um, in Nairobi who are farming. So great charity and a really good example of, of how things can go right. The third question comes from Raj, but this is also a question I get all the time, which is how do you become a speaker? And I think what most people want to know when they ask is how do I do more public speaking if this is your realm? You know, public speaking is a great way uh, to get your message out there, to connect with a larger audience. So whether you're an author, you have an idea to share, you're really just trying to get people uh, moved to take some sort of action. Speaking is a great way to do that. Um, I do a lot of keynote speaking. I've been speaking for seven years. I credit much of this to actually high school and getting my start speaking at oratory competitions and extemporaneous and so forth. And so this is a question I get a lot. You know, how do I start the speaking path? Or if I want more speaking engagements, what do I do? So here are a couple of my tips. One, you really have to put yourself out there as a speaker. And I don't mean you have to say that you are a professional speaker or that's what you do for a living, but you do have to put that out there so people know that you are available for speaking engagements, if you will. Uh, and that's important. So, so many authors out there, so many people who do speak and are available to speak don't always make it clear that they're on the speaking circuit, if you will. So you really need to put yourself out there. Um, I would recommend a quick landing page for your speaking services, whether you're looking to get paid or not. It makes a lot of sense to have a place where you can send people to. Meeting planners often need this quick place so people know exactly what you speak about. What's the big takeaway? The other thing I would tell you is focus on the client who hires you. A lot of times the client that hires you, and when I say hires, I use that loosely for engage. So whether you're being paid or not, if someone engages you to speak, make sure that you ask them what their goals are. 
uh, for the audience. It's not always what the audience wants to hear. In fact, a lot of times when someone brings you in to speak for, to something, it's because that audience may be uncomfortable with that idea or they're not quite educated in that concept and it's your job to go in there and educate them or entertain them or whatever it is. So make sure that you are taking your cues from the client or the person who actually engages you. And you know, the best thing um, about being a speaker is that you do get to connect with so many people all over the place, all over the world from different walks of life. And it's really important that you have something of value to share. So think about the topics you wanna speak about and spend a lot of time crafting what you wish to share. When you're done with a speaking engagement, always ask for referrals where you can speak at other events. I'm amazed at how many times I speak at an event and that event leads directly to being asked to speak at other events. So make sure that you don't break that chain. And the most important thing, as I like to say always, is momentum, get started. So many times people will say, I wanna be a speaker, but I'm scared, I've never done it before. So what, start someplace small, maybe it's a local community gathering, maybe it's someone's home, maybe it is a neighborhood restaurant where you have a, a small group of people. If you have something of value to share, there are people out there willing to listen and you really need to just get started and then continuously improve. So that's it guys. Those are my answers for the Ask Me Anything segment, our first episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I would love your comments and I welcome your questions. If you have questions you'd like answered, please put them in the comments. Ask on Facebook or on Twitter, hashtag Shema. I look forward to answering them. Be sure to subscribe so you know when your questions have been answered. I'm gonna be here every other Thursday answering all your burning questions. Until then, market like a Zen master.